my life today is crazy. <laughs> I mean, what else could you picture with a single mom to six kids? I love my kids dearly, but it's just always crazy. I didn't know what happiness was. You always think things will get better, you know, but I didn't think it was all that bad until I got out. That might sound dumb to some people, but I didn't think that it could be this much better. Without the why, I wouldn't be here, I don't think. I honest to goodness do not think I'd be here. If he didn't if he didn't kill us then, this is a year later. Things could have gotten a lot worse and I don't think I'd be here and if I was, I'd be really miserable. I'd be really, really miserable. My name is Kimberly Kaufman. I am a single mom to six children. I go to school for special education and elementary education and I work at TL Child Care as a supervisor of the toddler room. About 10 years ago I started seeing um, my ex-husband and there were obvious signs of things to run from but not to me. But now looking back it's pretty obvious. He started cheating and then the abuse started coming in more and more from physical to sexual to Definitely emotional. I think emotional was some of the hardest of it all. It got worse and worse. The sexual abuse got really, really bad, and I'd beg and plead for him to stop. Last year, 91% of the women that we served were there because of domestic violence. The most dangerous time for an individual or a family is when they leave. A lot of people don't make it. And so it's so important to have those supports and have a place that they can go to be safe. That Friday, I called my sister and we were talking and stuff and she's like, well, why don't you come up to Fargo and, and visit for the weekend? You need, you need some time to yourself. And he started calling and frantically texting me. So I shut off my phone. Then Saturday, I got up and his mom and his sister were contacting me saying that he was threatening to commit suicide. And in my head, I'm thinking, wow. He tried to commit suicide that night. He was in the hospital. And when I got back home, I just panicked. I just felt this overwhelming pan panic that he, if he's willing to go that far to try to keep me, what is his next goal? What is his end game here? I remember seeing on the news about this wife that her and her kids got killed from their dad and that just kept playing over and over in my head and I was thinking, is he gonna come home and kill all of us? I didn't know and I was terrified. So I made one phone call up to the YWCA and I told them what was going on and I said, I don't know if you guys can help me, I'm out of state and I was just bawling, can you guys please help me, I need out of here and they were like, we have a room for you if you could be up here by midnight. We have a spot for you. And two hours later, me and my six children were packed up and on our way up to the YWCA to start a whole new life. We have a whole new life now. And I cannot thank them enough for giving us this opportunity. I really can't. The YWCA helped me build me and not into somebody new, somebody that was already there that I didn't realize was there. I didn't realize I was there anymore. And then slowly those pieces of me started coming out. For once I love who I am. For once I love every bit of me, every bit of my life. And that's amazing. That's really amazing. This Giving Hearts Day, your gift of $44 will provide one woman with safety, meals, and caring support. By donating to the YWCA, you can help women like me gain independence, confidence, and most importantly, hope.